I'm going to start the recording. Okay, so I'm going to let you the space matter and let me know when I should change slides. Yeah, thank you, uh, Oten. Uh, and it is good to see uh, colleagues and friends joining and I'm happy to share my little experience on TV white space technology and community network. As this has been part of my 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 life almost for for eight years, so I'm happy to share, share to share my experience. Um, I'm uh, Jabera Matogoro. Uh, I work uh, at the University of Dodoma as the lecturer and also the coordinator for research and publication. And uh, I was also the Mozilla Fellow for 2019-2020 on the Open Internet Engineering Fellowship uh, with Irene and a few other colleagues. And I'm happy to see Irene and Sarah, who were also part of the Mozilla Fellow 2019-2020. And uh, maybe I'll try to make it um, not that much technical, but at least uh, sharing uh, resources which can also be comfortable, even if you're not a technical uh, person, but at least to see what you need to have in case you are uh, building an interest to use this technology to connect the unconnected. Next slide, please. Yeah, I will have around um, four or five bullets. Uh, the first one will be on the introduction. Uh, actually, I've already introduced myself, but I will also introduce the topic. And the second discussion will be on the measurements, spectral measurements, in case you need to do uh, measurements, how, how can you do it? Which devices can you use? I will also speak a little bit about the configuration of the TV white space devices. Uh, for this case, I'll try to show uh, the Carson wireless radio and also uh, six harmonics. But I will, for the interest of time, I will just show what uh, you need to have or what you need to do, especially when you're using the Carson wireless radio. I'm not mentioning this as a part of the promotion, but because uh, these are the few devices that I've worked in in my pilot. And the, the last section, I also speak about uh, the installation, some of the do and don'ts uh, when you're undertaking the TV waste space uh, deployment. And at the end, I also display some of the, uh, maybe few of the publication that I have made out of this, uh, this work because I'm from the academia, and as as part of the academia, you also need to share the uh, the academic uh, publications as as part of dissemination. Next slide. Yeah, I I, I understand that uh, most of us we we are aware why broadband matters, but I will try to give. Um, a few points. A broadband internet is the key for ICT-based economic developments. A broadband internet is also a key to bridge the rural and, and, and urban divide, digital divide. Also, a broadband internet is the key for, uh, to access modern services such as education, health, jobs, agriculture, and uh, it's, it's, it's very critical, especially in this uh, pandemic time. And uh, broadband internet can also help you uh, work from anywhere. You know, when we are mentioning you can work from anywhere, work from home, before the pandemic, it was not that much a normal tendency. But after the pandemic, working from home has been a normal tendency. Internet could also bring you uh, entertainment and also it can also connect to uh, elsewhere in the global community. 
And also, it's important for the broadband interest because a study from World Bank that was conducted showed that uh, broadband internet contribute to a national GDP. So it's very important that uh, we are only not pushing for social benefits, but it also have an economic value to, an, to a country. Next slide. Yes, and uh, it is important also to mention uh, what is uh, TV white space and why, why it matters. So uh, TV white space, as I said, is uh, the licensed spectrum that has been allocated for, uh, let's say, the primary user could be the digital terrestrial television. But we are trying to make use of it because sometimes and in some areas, this spectrum is not being utilized by the digital terrestrial televisions. So we are trying to use the same uh, licensed spectrum that has been allocated for the digital terrestrial televisions to be used to deliver a broadband internet. And in Tanzania, this is spectrum ranges from uh, actually in, 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 in Africa, Europe, and some of few regional, uh, IT regional countries. This spectrum ranges from 470 megahertz to 694 megahertz. This is after the mic digital migration from, from analog to digital terrestrial uh, broadcasting. Next slide. Yeah, so maybe one could ask um, if, if, if I need to know whether this spectrum is being utilized or underutilized, how could that be done? You have two options. Uh, one, you can use a very expensive card drive spectralizer, which normally is available with um, um, national regulators, but you can also find these very expensive card drive spectrum with uh, maybe a big, big uh, organization like mobile network operators. But you can also have uh, a raw cost handheld spectrum eraser, which can also do the same, the same um, uh, service, or which can also offer the same array of application as you could also have used uh, the very expensive ex uh, car spectrum uh, uh, analyzer. But uh, in, in any case, you need to conduct a measurement in order to understand the extent of the spectrum utilization. So by doing that, you can use a, a very expensive card drive spectrum analyzer, or you can use the low cost hand, handheld spectrum analyzer. I have used both, but uh, uh, the card drive spectrum analyzer was not with me most of the time. So I also had to find out an option of the devices which I will, which I used to have in most of the time. So I, I use the card drive spectrum riser in some of the location, but uh, I also used a uh, raw cost handheld spectrum riser in some of the, in the location. Next slide. So yeah, this is one of the TCI uh, spectrum monitoring management uh, solution, which was, given by the TCRI when we're doing some measurements. It has um, the, on the top is that the antenna and in the car, uh, there are other equipment which you can now correct. Um, <laughs> Sorry, someone joined with unmuting the net, the, their mic, I think, so. Okay, I, I thank you. Mute the... Thank you so much. And I'm very sorry for that uh, interruption, but it's okay. So I was just sharing that uh, this is uh, 
one of the TCI spectrum monitoring and management solution that were used to understand the spectrum measurements in the measurement phase. Next slide. Yeah, for, for the raw cost handheld spectrum riser, this is also uh, one of the raw cost handheld spectrum analyzer, which uh, I, I bought in order to do a spectral measurement. Uh, because as I said, sometimes it's not possible to have the card drive uh, spectral analyzer, the TCI uh, spectral analyzer most of the time. So I also had to find out an, another option in order to proceed with the with the measurement, so uh, for for this one, it has the 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 the, the antenna. You can see the Nang Nangoya NA dash seven seven one, which you can use uh, to uh, correct some of the signals, and then uh, because uh, uh, this is not that much intelligence, so you need to connect. It, it has the uh, the software in the in the laptop, which when it corrects the signal, then you can analyze those signal using the uh, software that has been installed to uh, your laptop. So for me, for my case, uh, I used the uh, the the Ubuntu operating systems, and then when correcting the the the, the measurements, then I was able to analyze those measurements uh, using the built-in uh, software or features within the, the software that uh, control the, the devices. So it was it's some of very uh, low, low cost. It's, it's not that much expensive, especially if you're doing just for the sake of understanding uh, the utilization level of that signal. So you can opt to have that or if you are, if you have the 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 car drives uh, spectrum analyzer like the TCI uh, monitoring and management software, you can use that. But in case that is not available, you can just order that. It's, I think it's costing just a few dollars, like hundred or one hundred and fifty, and then it can still do uh, good work. Like if you could have used a very expensive car drive. Uh, spectrum analyzer. So next slide. Yeah, you, you can see some of the settings that uh, I used in my, uh, this is my car and uh, I was just uh, fixing that inside my uh, actual, in my, my car and sometimes in some few location you take it out, but it is connected with, uh, with the laptop and the laptop is, uh, was running the uh, the Ubuntu operating systems, and you can also see my phone was there because I also have to to capture the coordinates, like uh, longitude and latitude. And then uh, when we are doing the configurations in order to capture the signal in that location, then you have to give to give to to write in or to type in at uh, the coordinate of that location. And uh, I, I I used my 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 mobile my smartphone to capture the uh, use. I, actually, I was using the uh, GPS uh, uh, GPS app to capture the coordinates for wrong student that student. And then you, uh, when you are doing the configuration uh, before you run the the measurements within the laptop, then you have to uh, the the you have to supply those information and, and, and actually you also have to check them. Uh, yeah, so I think that's uh, uh, what I can see in terms of measurements. Uh, you, uh, for, well, the Ubuntu operating system has, um, um, for example, the RF start. This is uh, when you click, you can now correct the measurements and then afterward you can analyze. And you actually, uh, for me, I, uh, the threshold value is uh, 85 dBm, um, minus 85 dBm. That was used as the threshold 
value for to decide whether the channel is occupied or, or not. So this is uh, the setup that I used when I was correcting the, the measurements in, 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 in actually uh, that was done in Dodoma in Tanzania. And uh, we took a lot of time to do the, the measurements and also to make sure that uh, the, the measurements are, are valid and uh, uh, so reliability and validity of the measurement was also checked uh, so that uh, when you're publishing, then you make sure that you are publishing something that even if someone repeat doing the same measurement in the same uh, area within the same condition, then we'll also get the same result. Next slide. Yeah, so this this is one of the results that um, after doing after doing the analysis uh, from the measurements that were corrected from from the TV uh, from the handheld uh, low cost handheld spectrum analyzer. So actually, in in each location, uh, a duration of fifteen uh, minutes was configured, and the reading were corrected, and then after that, the reading the corrected reading were analyzed and you can see um, uh, different colors within the, the the range of the 470 to 695. so that's those are some of the uh, uh, heat map uh, results that are generated from the the previous shown the raw cost handheld spectrum analyzer so you can do the same and you can get uh, such kind of results just with uh, a low cost. Because sometimes in, uh, in telecom, uh, spectrum measurement is, is very difficult if you don't have uh, the correct devices. And sometimes the, the spectrum arrays are very expensive even for universities or a community network to own. But uh, with this one, even a community network can, can have that and then it can make a justification because for the regulator to give you permission to use that, that channel, then you will be required to confirm that no one is using that spectrum. I'm not sure, uh, Etienne, if we need to have a, a question at the end or because uh, I think I'm finishing on, on the measurements, I will start another, another, another part which is different from the measurements. Uh, is um, can you guide? Should we take up, or we can proceed, and then question and answers can come at the end? Well, up to you. Yeah, we can we can keep all the questions for the end if you want. So it's uh, you may uh, answer some of the question already in it, so we can go through all of them in the at the end. Yeah. Okay. Let me finish, and then we can we can have. Um, we can have questions at the end. So next slide. The next one, uh, I, that we, I will speak that at the end. Next slide. Yeah, so uh, uh, in case of the configurations, you know, uh, for, for the first time actually, when I started working on TV white space, I, I started using the, okay. Yes, so we thank you so much, and uh, probably uh, the recording will be available, and then you can just check. And I, I will also be available in the mailing list just to answer in case maybe someone who have missed the session and just uh, able to listen on the recording, then they can just be able to to answer any questions even if it's not today. So uh, I, I was mentioning that uh, when I started working on the TV white space, um, the, the first devices that I used those six harmonics. And um, I used that uh, when, when actually I was in IIT Bombay, when I, I, I went there for, for research fellowship, it was a six month. And in the lab, um, the devices that was, was in the lab was uh, six harmonics. So we so, uh, designed a network within the campus, IIT Mumbai. And then we also went to the rural area and uh, tried to deploy the, the network. But after coming back to Tanzania, um, 
at the University of Dodoma procured the Carson Wireless Radio, which is another vendor for the TV West Space Radio. And there are, there are many other vendors offering uh, uh, TV West Space devices. And it's not uh, only two, uh, there, are, there are many, and you can find out maybe the one available local in your in your area and then you i, I have seen that uh, they they both seem to have the, the same step of the configuration so next slide yeah uh, this is uh the 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 radio that we used and um actually it is installed it was installed in Twenty-eight meters above the ground, and you can see the at the top of uh, at the top of um, the device. Uh, the, the this is the base station, and it has three sector antenna. You can see at the top; uh, those are the uh, the the cables connecting to the sector antenna that was also installed in. Uh, 28 meters uh, within the it was co-located with the with, with the the mobile network tower so and it was also connected to the fiber and the fiber within uh the the the, the base station and then we were able to connect to the router and at the end the router connected to the switch and the access points and then we are able to connect uh, and transmit signal. The, the, the longest distance that we we covered, I think, uh, was around five kilometer. But the device can can go up to ten kilometers. So you can see just with uh, one base station, you can cover a radius of uh, maybe ten kilometer without uh, requiring a repeater or another device in between. So. That's also another advantage of the technology because it has a very strong uh, propagation characteristics to penetrate trees and and any other obstacles compared to other to compared to higher frequencies like two point four gigahertz or five point eight and 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 similar uh, range and you can see that. Um, uh, the the base station has the 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 input, which is also connected to the PoE injector, and can also connect to the antenna, maybe to the computer when you're doing the configuration, and it also have the output for each uh, PoE injector. And once they're powered, then you have to wait for a few minutes for the system to initialize. This is uh, when you are. Uh, when you are configuring it for the first time, but uh, afterwards, uh, it's, it's not that much uh, difficult to connect because you can just connect by using the, uh, the the web browser. So for the first time, when you connect the device, then uh, it will pick the local IP address, and then you can you can you can rely on. Uh, assigned dynamic uh dynamically by using your dhcp server and if you need then you can use a scanning utility like agri ip scanner to search for the base station and for for, for this one um it was it was somewhat tricky for the first time when you connect to the to the network before because when you connect uh it, it it automatically pick an an ip address but you can you you may not be aware which ip address it has it has picked so what you need to do uh, you can you can you can log into the to the switch that you connected and then you you can see uh the mac address of the device and then uh, after identifying the MAC address of the device, then you can pick up the correct IP address for that for that device. So that way you you are able to know the IP address of uh, of the base station, and then you can just now access the base station using the the web interface. Otherwise, when you use the uh, thing like the Agri IP scanner, you can search for for the base station, then you can find out the IP address for that. 
Next slide. Yeah, so after 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 initial configuration, like for example, for us when we're doing this, um, you start with the bed and then afterwards you extend the the rink maybe within the university before taking it to the to the rural area. Or for example, if you are doing in, within the community network, then you can do it within the room and then up before extending it to the to the to the rural area or the place where you want to, to install. And after all the configuration has been finalized, then you can just uh, assign uh, the start KP address, and then you can use that KP address to access the the web interface, and then you can log in with username and password. Uh, for 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 six uh, for the Carlson uh, wireless, then uh, the default username and password are both admin and admin. So then you can log in, and then after login, is where you we will find some of the of the the interface which you have to do a few configurations before starting using the same so you can do you can have the home button the land configuration the applications the traffic sharing so there are a lot of uh, configuration that you can do after logging to the to the to the to the device so um, when, once you log in you do a number of configuration and then afterwards you are you are you are you are ready to go. And for us, we also develop the uh, a geolocation spectrum database, which you also need to uh, to configure so that the device uh, can pick the frequency from the geolocation spectrum database. Next slide. Yeah, for the for the radio manager is where you will you will need to do a few other configurations. If your device is not automatically picking the GPS, then you you need to have a manual configuration. Otherwise, in most cases uh, nowadays, the devices can just pick up the geolocation spectrum um, coordinate, and then it can automatically have those configured within. Otherwise. It is also this where you can do the post registration and channel request are complete. So you should also see channel list available in the radio manager post message. So this is uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the button available within the the the, the when, once you log in to the to the device, then you can do a number of configuration using that ring. Thank you. Next slide. Right? I, uh, yeah, I remember I have mentioned about uh, the geolocation spectrum database. This is uh, the interface that we had in uh, in the geolocation spectrum database that we developed. So we we actually we just created an API, and we connected to the CSIR uh, calculation engine in South Africa. So we only had the the API in Tanzania and connected. Uh, to the CSIR calculation engine in South Africa. So uh, the, the API was, was developed following the POS standard uh, protocol like RFC uh, 7545, which were used to develop the, this API. And it, it also was compliant with the CSIR uh, calculation engine. And maybe something else to add on, on top of this is that uh, when when you also have, well, for example, if, if your country has already uh, a list of uh, um, geolocation that's uh, operating, uh, and then uh, most of the vendors have already uh, in the firmware integrated uh, those databases. So uh, I'm sure you, you just need to just configure and select the correct uh, database that you need to use and then you are you are you are ready to go otherwise if you are developing your own geolocation spectrum database then you also need to make sure that the uh, the, the 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 device manufacturers is also aware of the standard that you have used so that they can configure those standards within the devices before the shipment to your location. This is uh, something very important because otherwise, 
you might have the device and you miss the location the spectrum that you want to use and then you may not be able to use that next slide yes uh, for, for our case uh, as i mentioned uh, we used uh, tv white space to within a community network where we connected a few uh, schools and community in Kondoa using the technology. So we also try to bring uh, different stakeholders on board and give them the access to the internet. Next slide. Yeah, so I think uh, we are just uh, about to wind up maybe so that we can have um, Q, Q and A, uh, and this is the architecture that we 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 used. So, as I mentioned, you can see uh, we have the base station located in in one of the tower mobile network operator tower. So we co-located the antenna and the devices on top of that. And in the school uh, premises, we also had to install the locked periodic antenna and also the customer process equipment that receive the signal from, from the base station. So you can see we connected three schools and we also had a geolocation spectrum database, which was also connected to, to the internet. And uh, the, the geolocation spectrum database actually was hosted in Dar es Salaam in, in one of the national internet data center and then it was able to give the ip addresses uh, no no it's the spectrum uh, frequencies or channels to a number of devices that are located in different locations within the country so this is the network architecture that we used for condor community network and it can also be replicated in in case you also want to do the same thank you next slide in, th in terms of um uh, bandwidth. Uh, this this was the uh, this the the traffic that we are able to achieve in in different location. You can see, for example, in in, in Bustan Teachers College, we are able to have four point eight eight Mbps download speed, and the upload was around three point five two Mbps. The same with Kondoa. The, the download was around 3.02 Mbps and the upload was 1.1 Mbps. In, in, in Ura Secondal, the download was 2.91 and the upload was, was 1.59. So these were just an uh, average, but it also depended on the time you are, you are, you are, you are taking measurement because when speak, peak hours you find the signal shared among the users uh, not that much big but when you no know, less people are using then you find you could have a, a lot of traffic otherwise uh, uh, the, the 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 speed for the for the for the for the device could go to up to 24 mbps uh, signal for the for the device itself, so it can bring a lot of uh, a lot of high speed to the end users. It it can bring. bring. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so uh, there, there are some of the challenges, um, special that uh, most rural areas are facing. And um, I'm, I'm not sure if, 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 if these challenges are, are also happening in the rest of the world, for example, in, in Brazil, I see, and I, I also seen uh, even in, in Mexico, but in, in, in Africa and especially in Tanzania, uh, there is a lack of affordable backcoding solution. And uh, also there is a very high cost on the broadband. And sometimes um, to collocate your devices, you also need to pay a very high fee for, 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 for a community to use that 
solution. And um, there is also a challenge on uh, stable power, especially in, in the rural area. And uh, I also happen to see that uh, there is a high rate of illiterate, especially digital literacy in, in most of the rural areas. So sometimes you can, you can bring the connectivity and you find no one is using it because digital literacy is a challenge or you find maybe devices are not always on because of the power. And sometimes even community to afford those is, is becoming a challenge. I think that's why we are also trying to advocate for alternative and complementary approaches like community network to see how we can try to bridge the current digital divide. Because um, without trying to address the challenge, then the challenge of the, the, the digital divide will exist. And country like Tanzania, we it's almost more than 60, hours, uh, 60 years since we got the independence, but you still, the number of connected and people who are using internet is, is, is not that much promising. Uh, we're making good progress for the for the voice, but in terms of uh, data, still there is a there is a challenge. And uh, once you also have the the access to internet, it's not always uh, available and it's not always stable for most of the time. And uh, another challenge is that uh, you can bring the connectivity, but you find there is few content, especially from rural area, which can be interested to for for people, especially new people in rural area, to join the internet. Otherwise, uh, you also have to advocate on uh, and support people who can create content, and those content can can maybe make people uh, be interested to visit and see them in the internet. Another challenge is the policy favoring the use of uh, community network and TV. So I, I appreciate Kenya with Irene and other people like Josephine who have, have been pushing for uh, policies on TV white space and community network. And we are happy that um, the, 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 the local regulator have, have, have accepted and they have developed the, the policies that favor community, community network and, uh, and TV white space. We are also trying to advocate for the same in Tanzania and I hope soon we'll be there because we see now a good, a good support compared to when we started. For example, very recently, the, minister, the Minister of Information, the Minister of Information Communications and Information Technology have announced the consultants for the TV white space technology as an alternative to for broadband, broadband internet. So we are hoping that maybe once that consultancy is being finalized, then it will set the direction on how the government can can make use of this technology next slide yeah sustainability is also important and uh, sometimes uh, what i've seen in that uh, community network should also be supported to come up with um, maybe income generating activities to sustain their 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 connectivity solution otherwise other option like engaging government through the universal communication service access fund and the other partners could also be an option to support the connectivity in that, that location next slide next slide please yeah uh, okay so these are some of the papers uh, academic contribution that i've made um you can, I think, uh, people can just access them and, and read uh, in, if, if one is interested for, for that. Next slide. Santin Sana, and thank you so much for listening. Maybe there are other few slides that you can just uh, pass it quickly. They are just pictures and what we have done. Next slide. Yeah. This is one of the steering committee in Condor. Next slide. This is the school that we also connected. Next slide. This is the teachers, um, teachers college, which we also connected. We are trying to install on top of that building. Next slide. 
And this is one, this was also one of the last school when we were connecting. It's called Ura Secondary School, and you can see few people are using the internet in that in that location. Next slide. Uh, actually, uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, achievements uh, were made possible with the support from the Mozilla Foundations, Internet Society, and the, the Universal Roma. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry that we took uh, almost the entire uh, session, but I think we can have uh, QA and then before we, we went up. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording.